Okay, I'm from the Department of Computational Biology at KTH in Stockholm, Sweden. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, a spike in neural network model that tries to uh, find some clues to how we get normalization in, in the private projects. Okay, so you all know normalization of a vector. You divide each uh, vector entry with the common denominator, and the point about this is kind of that you can keep the relationship between the different entries, uh, but you can still have a vector of constant length, so you, don't, you can uh, decrease the magnitude of the vector. And I think you see very, uh, this computation also in neural systems. So if you look at the second equation, this actually describes normalization in a neural system where Rj will be the output from a single computation of neurons. This could be a neuron, this could be a group of neurons. And this would be modulated by input to some other computational units in the same group. And this is the red stuff you see there. So if you have more input to the other units, this will suppress the firing of your unit. Uh, okay, so what's the point of this? Well, if you look at this nice image, I have drawn here, this is like a um, toy example. If I draw you this nice image of a black cat and a white sun, and I show it to you here in this room, uh, and then I show it to you outside on a sunny day. You will see approximately the same thing, right? As you see in the top row, where bright is lighter and to the left is darker. Uh, and this is the result of a normalizing transformation. Okay, so if you want, if you try to do something similar, but instead use just a subtractive transformation, and you don't divide by a sum of the inputs, but you instead try to subtract some function of the sum, you can't really achieve the same result. So you're going to get something that looks as the bottom row, like inside. If your visual system worked like this, inside everything would be dark, and like outside everything would be white, and that would not be very good for your information processing. Okay, uh, so what's the problem about this? Uh, well, the key issue is, as you can see here to the left, we don't really know how can neurons on your systems perform division. I mean, there are some ideas about this, but no one no has really been able to show like, that their idea actually is a play in like, real biological neural systems. Um, I mean, is that... And, and, and the key problem is kind of like, if you look at the graph on the top left, uh, this is uh, the input-output curve of a model neuron, it's an integrated prime neuron. Uh, and the first graph, the blue one with the green crosses on, this is just, I have more input into the neuron, for example, input to uh, spikes. And this is on the, the horizontal axis. And then you can see the firing on the vertical axis. So what happens typically if I give some inhibition to this neuron is that you just get a subtractive shift of the firing curve. Uh, so, but however, if you look at the neural system, you look at the graph down uh, below, this is how it typically looks like when you add increased inhibition. This is actually from a, a fly or factory system, but you see the same uh, thing in multiple stations visual cortex for, for primates, for example. So, if this is, the top is like how it usually works when we do it in our models, and the bottom is how it looks in the nervous system. So the question is, what is happening that we're not really catching on to? Uh, so, the group I'm working with has been doing uh, some work with kind of structured models where you have, you model the hyper and mini structure of cortex, and you use the mini as functional units, as groups of units, so you can say you employ some kind of population rate coding. And we noticed that in some of these models, you should you find this soft mini call behavior. So this is the project was about trying to see, could you also find some kind of normalization in this type of model? Uh, so the model I made you see here on the left, uh, basically it's a number of mini calls, which have a group of excited results, probably cells, and then you have uh, a group of inhibitor results. Um, and you can see here we have feedback inhibition between the excitatory and the inhibitor results. So we have some kind of basic prerequisite to get uh, some kind of normalizing effect because if you add, if you have a certain input for this one and you add more input for those, uh, this will be excited more and all, five or all the units will be suppressed. So uh, I'm just going to show you some shortly some of the results. Um, and first of all, if you just use like the standard setup, you can see very clearly this subtractive shift I showed you in the previous picture. So nothing very interesting happening there. However, uh, if you change some of the parameters, you can get some interesting effects. And, and one of them is uh, that there's actually intrinsically generated noise in this model. And if you enhance this by 
using this larger uh, uh, IPS peaks, you can get the effect you see on the top left. And this is a, a clear divisive shift of the fiber rate curve. Uh, you can also see that if you increase the variability, for example, in incoming connections for each uh, neuron, so you can have like, uh, some neurons will have a lot of inhibitor connections, some will have very few inhibitor connections, for example. You can see, you also, I mean, this is a subtractive shifter, but you also see over here that there's like a clear divisive gauge in it as well. And, and for the last image, if you add short term depression, which we know is present in cortex, you get quite a different uh, effect on the fiber rate curves. But also here, this is, if you, if you look at this part here, this is actually a bit normalized, I have not shown that image here. This is not really a part of the normalization, but over here it's, it's quite good actually. Um, so the conclusion we can draw from this is that there are, in this model, you know, several effects that can be used to approximate normalization. Uh, However, basically we're stuck like, at the same point as everyone else. I mean, we can show that this can work in our model, but we can't really yet at least show that this, some of these effects could be yet played like, in the biological nervous system. Uh, but still, I think that some, some of these things are interesting to look more into, and especially one thing that has not really been mentioned is that um, I mean, most studies of normalization use a single neuron, and you want, they don't have this effect on a single neuron. But one thing that we can show here, we can make this even better if you change some parameters, uh, is that you can have a device gain change of the population filing output without having any device gain change on a single neuron. So, so maybe we should start thinking about, you know, how could population rate coding affect these things? And also the role of like synaptic depression. And, uh, and the noise thing is interesting because this is, I mean, this is one of the proposals of how this maybe happens in the brain. But in the other studies that I have seen, the noise is more like just, yeah, let's assume we have this amount of noise coming from over here somewhere. Then we're going to get the device effect. But the nice thing here, even if, uh, the parameters maybe are a bit unrealistic for, for that image is that the noise is actually generated intrinsically in the model. So, yeah, that's it.